Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special episode of the Rideshare Dojo. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a uh, YouTube Live that occurred last week, hosted by Harry Campbell. Uh, I moderated on the sidelines, answered some questions. And uh, this, I thought, would be great for you out there who might have missed it. Uh, drivers were asking all kinds of questions, and and there are all kinds of uh, theories and thoughts and answers flying around. The title of the Q and A was "What Should Lyft and Uber Drivers Do in This Situation?" So it runs for about an hour. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy it, and uh, you'll learn some things. And uh, in this ever changing, quickly changing uh, situation that we're in. Uh, just keep close to uh, the right share guy because we're going to keep bringing you updates uh, as soon as we we know, particularly in the area of how do we uh, claim our unemployment benefits now that the uh, stimulus package passed. But for right now, let's uh, let's go to the YouTube live with Harry Campbell. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a quick YouTube live session. I know there's a lot going on with uh, everything with the uh, coronavirus, driving, personal life, uh, professional life, pretty much everything. So uh, today we're going to cover all that and more in my monthly YouTube live. Um, and I guess we're all the way into March. So welcome, everyone. It looks like we've got some people joining. And I know we had a couple issues with the link. So if you're watching this, then you are in the right place. <laughs> Feel free to say hi in the live chat if you're watching live. And looks like we've got Matthew joining, Gary from New Jersey, uh, Damani from New Jersey, David uh, says, I have a frozen pick of Harry and a timer saying four minutes. So you may want to refresh. If you're having any issues, go ahead and refresh your browser. If you're on your desktop or if you're on your phone, you might want to just close out the app and then pull up the live again on the Rideshare Guy YouTube channel. So we're already up to 40 people watching live and I'm sure there'll be plenty more since obviously a lot's going on. So, you know, what I first want to say is just uh, thank you for, you know, sort of subscribing and watching the channel, you know, this is a tough time for a lot of drivers. And one of the reasons why I wanted to really go live uh, today and just so I could answer your questions and see what we can do to help. Obviously, on the blog and the YouTube channel, we've been highlighting, you know, the situation for Uber and Lyft drivers. But I mean, the situation is kind of grim out there for rideshare drivers. You know, it's sort of dangerous. There's not a lot of rides. And, you know, one of the things we'll be working on on the YouTube channel and the blog is just highlighting all the different opportunities uh, out there, whether it's, you know, making money with delivery jobs or other jobs, or just helping you get by, keeping you updated on the government, uh, I guess, stimulus bill that may include drivers, what Uber and Lyft are doing. You know, we just posted an article on the rideshare guy about a driver who was actually, he wasn't uh, diagnosed with coronavirus, but his doctor did put him in a 14 day quarantine. And he actually ended up getting paid $2,100 from Uber. So Definitely some options out there, and I would love to help you guys with, uh, you know, everyone is going through a challenging time right now. So let's see what I can do to help. Uh, Dennis says, any any sympathy for the drivers? Yeah, definitely. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm on this live, so that I can help you. Jay, we've also got a uh, senior contributor, Jay Crater, in the chat. You know, unfortunately, YouTube, they changed the, um, you know, the, the setup for bringing in other contributors. So I, I haven't been able to figure out how to bring in uh, 
new contributors since they got rid of the Hangouts option. But Jay, as soon as I figure that out, I'll be able to bring you back on and maybe I know Sergio wants to come on the live too and, and chat. So I think we've got a ton of people. Wow, we're actually already up to 120 people live. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Definitely a lot of news to cover and I want to answer all of your questions. So if you guys have lots of questions, I'll try and stay on as long as possible for at least an hour and we can get all those taken care of. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up yet, go ahead and do so now. If you're watching live and you're on your browser, you should have a little option to see me and uh, you'll be able to ask questions on the right hand side or if you're on mobile, I think it's down below and start asking those questions. And um, if you are watching after the fact, if you're not watching live Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, then you can also leave a comment and I'll check those comments later and uh, do my best to get back to you. So, all right, let's see what uh, questions do we have? So I guess, first of all, um, Barb says, thankful that we are all, that we are all considered essential. You know, I think that, you know, as more cities and states start to do these shelter in place orders, you know, I think we're definitely going to see less demand across the country. I'm here in California. So Uber and Lyft demand has basically dropped down to, you know, dropped 80, 90%, maybe it seems like for a lot of drivers. And, um, you know, but I think as more states do this, uh, demand is going to go down. But I guess the nice thing is that, you know, there is something, well, at least for some drivers, it's better than nothing. I know some people uh, have been wondering if Uber and Lyft should shut down, period. So I'd be curious to know your thoughts. Obviously, Uber and Lyft recently, they stopped, or Uber at least stopped doing the shared rides. That was last week. Seems like a lot longer, but I think it was only last week that they stopped shared rides. So I'd be curious to know from you guys if you think that uh, Uber and Lyft should stop operating. Because I think, you know, the, the really tough thing for a lot of drivers right now and a lot of people I've been hearing from they're saying that you know obviously you know I'm no doctor right but if you're sitting in a car for 10, 20, or 30 minutes at a time. And that's a lot less than six feet, obviously, with someone who may be sick or symptomatic or yourself who might be sick or symptomatic. It just seems like a recipe for spreading germs and passing on this virus. So, uh, you know, I see Walt says, please guys, don't drive. Uh, Luis is asking about if it's safe to do delivery. And I think delivery is a lot safer. I'm sure we'll chat a lot more about delivery. So we'll get into that. Timothy says, I'm 61 with type two diabetes. Diabetes. I haven't been driving for four days. I feel like I'm playing Russian roulette every time I pick someone up, considering doing food delivery only. So I think that's a perfect segue, Timothy. I think that especially if you're someone who I think they call it immuno immunocompromised, right? So if you have some other medical issue or, you know, you have diabetes or, you know, for something that's kind of like a combining factor and you tend to be older, I think that's where, you know, to me, from a driver's perspective, I just don't know if the risk is worth it with the lower demand, you know, re regardless of what you think about the virus, the, the facts are that there's a lot lower demand. And if you're someone who's worried about getting sick, I think an alternative is food delivery because while you may not be able to make as much money, since demand is down on rideshare anyways, you're going to be making uh, less doing rideshare only anyways. So I'm curious to know if anyone is still doing rideshare and still finding that they're making, I'd be very surprised if anyone's making the same amount, but if anyone's making, you know, close to what they used to, I would love to hear from you. And then we'll definitely, you know, so we've been hearing from a lot of drivers and we're doing a ton of research right now. I know Jay has been looking at some options and some of the other writers and, uh, vloggers on my team have been looking at just other options that drivers will have. So we'll be, I'll highlight those for sure in this YouTube live and others uh, in the future. We'll have lots of videos. So, all right, let's see. Um, I saw some good questions. Kristen Kim says doing Uber eats only, but taking a break this week. So I think, you know, just to kind of put, touch on that point, like food delivery, I think right now is definitely a, a great option. Instacart, um, I think is probably the busiest of all the delivery services right now. And the way that you can actually check that in your area. So I'm here in Los Angeles and I know that Instacart, usually if you place an order from the customer side, it's one to two hours. And over the past few weeks, I've seen multiple days and I've seen, you know, like yesterday it was up to five hours for your delivery. And so 
this, there's two reasons for that. One is because a lot of the grocery stores don't have food. So that's an issue. But for the places that are well in stock, we're seeing huge demand on Instacart. And Instacart actually just announced that they're going to be hiring 300,000 couriers over the next uh, few months, basically, to kind of keep up with all that increased demand. So Instacart is definitely an option. I think we might even have a link to sign up down below um, uh, for Instacart using our link if you want. Otherwise, I can leave a link to our gig jobs page and you guys can check that out. Uh, we've got a big list of different jobs, including Instacart and everything else. Matthew says, I just opted in to do Uber Eats. Never thought I would do it. Five plus year driver here. So you know, one of the nice things is if you kind of want to just dip your toes in the water, if you're already an Uber driver, it is very easy to opt in to Uber Eats and at least try it and check it out. You know, like I said, like I think Rideshare is not the greatest idea right now if you're, you know, someone who really is worried about spreading or catching, uh, you know, like a kind of contagious disease like coronavirus. The nice thing about delivery right now is that there's just so much less human interaction, right? I think that, you know, when really it's just you sitting in a car, you walking into a restaurant and picking up the food. I've heard that even some restaurants now have contactless pickup. So ideally, you'll walk into the restaurant, it'll be sitting there on the counter, you grab it and go. Don't have to look at anyone, don't have to talk to anyone. Um, um, and then you bring it into your car and then all of the food delivery apps now have contactless pickup for our contactless delivery for the customers. So they can actually opt into that. And um, if customers opt into that, then all you do is just ring the doorbell and leave it on the doorstep. I definitely recommend you leave the <laughs> ring the doorbell because sometimes the app doesn't always notify customers, but that's what I would do. So Jay says, Rallies, Safeway, Save Mart, Amazon Flex, Papa John's, all hiring big time right now. So yeah, I think that there are a number of options. Um, you know, if you really, you know, obviously we can, we can get into what Uber and Lyft are doing to help drivers and what the government might be doing. But at the end of the day, you know, no one cares more about your economic security more than yourself, right? So while there may be programs in the future that are going to help you, and I'm definitely, we'll, we'll dig into the details of all those today. Like if you really need money, you know, the first of the month is coming up. And if you have rent due and your landlord's not cutting you any slack, like there are options right now out there for you. There are people that are hiring. And while this, you know, uh, whole pandemic is definitely having a huge negative effect on a lot of different areas of the economy and society and all that, like if you're someone who needs to work and needs to make money, we're going to definitely do our best to highlight what those jobs are and uh, help you guys make some money to at least, you know, tide you over. So, uh, Barb says I was working 12 hours daily, making about $150 down from 225 to 50. So that's down almost, uh, 30, 40%, which is definitely tough. Jay says, I read an article that a guy drove 10 hours for Uber in San Francisco and made 65. That sounds about right. You know, to be honest, I think at this point, like I'd be very surprised at this point, if you can't switch to food delivery or grocery delivery or one of the delivery apps and make more doing that than you could with rideshare today, right? Normally, you know, whenever people ask me, I always say, Hey, you know, you know, people will pay more for a ride for themselves across town than their burritos. So just by kind of simple math, you're always going to make more being a rideshare driver. But I think right now with demand for rideshare just way down and demand for delivery is actually increasing. And I think if things you know stay the same or even, you know, God forbid, get worse, then I think we could actually see a lot more demand for food delivery, sort of like what we saw in uh, happen in China. So um, that'll definitely be something to keep an eye on. I like the way Jay puts this in the comments. Uh, Jay, who's one of our contributors here on the YouTube channel, appreciate you joining Jay and definitely go check out his videos. I know he's got a lot more coming out that'll be uh, great content and helpful for you guys in this time. He says, drivers need to be able to pivot to where there's new demand. And I really like that way of thinking about it, right? In any you know sort of downturn or really any event period, there's always winners and losers. Sometimes the losers outweigh the winners. And I think that's what we're happening in this situation. But there are certain in industries, there are certain businesses that are seeing a lot of, you know, I guess you would call it success right now. So I think for you guys, if you're really thinking about it, you want to identify what are those opportunities? What are those industries that in this time are actually doing well, are actually profiting, are actually seeing increased business? And how can I kind of, you know, hitch my wagon to them? So that's why we've been talking about delivery so much to start. Uh, Jim says, should I wear a face mask while driving? So I'll be honest, like I see a lot of conflicted um, you know, kind of, uh, I, I guess like evidence about 
wearing a face mask while driving. And I guess what I would say is if it makes you comfortable, I think go ahead and do it. It seems like from the research I've done, it's a lot more effective if you're sick, because then when you cough into a face mask, the particles don't go through the face mask. But if you're someone who's not sick and there's a bunch of, you know, like kind of you know, particles floating around, they can still swoop in through the mask. But what I know, one thing for sure, I know that wearing a mask can't hurt, right? So if you already have some mask, um, you know, available at your house or you can have easy access to them, I think that it's probably a good idea, you know, as long as you're not sort of hoarding them from maybe the medical professionals that need them. So that's how I would handle that. Uh, Robin says, has anyone watched Letter from the Coronavirus? I don't know. What is that? A movie, YouTube video? I haven't heard of that. But uh, I will say I have watched two movies in the past two weeks. Totally off topic for a second. Um, if anyone can guess what two movies are, I think uh, you may win a prize. But um, the two movies that I've watched recently are, um, what was it? It was on Outbreak, the one with the little monkey, <laughs> and then also Contagion with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. So those are the two movies. Yeah, Jay got one of them, Contagion. Good job, Jay. Um, you'll, you'll get your prize at the end of the month when I send you your paycheck. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I will say that, like, even though there's, you know, a lot going on outside, uh, those two movies were kind of interesting to watch. And I actually learned a lot from Contagion. Outbreak, I think, was, you know, a little unrealistic, especially at the end when they, like, came up with a anecdote and like you know very quickly i won't ruin the movie but uh i think contagion would be my pick just completely off topic so craigslist says keep your mask milad says uh, parasite that was also a good movie but i don't think that has anything to do with the coronavirus operation jackhammer yeah you got it contagion and outbreak so definitely two good movies to watch um right now timothy says you didn't give enough time to guess lol well you know the chat on my end is like actually a little bit delayed. So I think there's like a few seconds in between when I say something and you uh, you guys chat. But anyways, uh, Excelsior says masks don't prevent getting viruses. And, you know, like, I guess what I would say is like, I don't want to argue about how effective masks are or aren't. One thing I know is that I know that masks don't hurt. So I think that's something we can probably all agree on. So if like, it's like placebo effect, right? If it makes you feel comfortable, then I say, go ahead and do it. Because, you know, that's one thing that I think is important, like in these times, right? Like, I think it's very important to, you know, think about the things that you can control, right? You can control your stress levels. You can control your sleep levels. You can control your sugar intake. There's a comedian I like, and he refers to this as the three S's, right? So those are the three things you can, you can control. So you can imagine, right? If you're stressed out like night and day about the coronavirus and wondering about this and worrying about all that, like, I think that makes your body more susceptible, potentially getting sick and then maybe even getting the virus. So it's like, Hey, think about what are the things that you can control and let's focus as much as possible on improving those and making sure that you're getting your eight hours of sleep a night that you know you're eating healthy during this time and what was the third thing i said oh stress you know maybe you're not watching you know all coronavirus coverage all the time and that's one thing i will say on the youtube channel we've had a lot of coronavirus coverage lately but you know we released a video the other day like the best ways to contact lyft and so we're trying to do like 50 50 content just like kind of normal programming and then also coronavirus stuff since obviously that is very important right now. Steven says, hello, I'm 73 and stop driving. No money and the risks are not worth it. Carlitos Cruz. Hey, what's up, Carlitos? Haven't heard from you in a while. He says, I made $100 last night in Los Angeles, but I made the most around 9.30 to 11 p.m. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm assuming, I know Carlitos is an Uber and Lyft driver, so I'm, I'm wondering if uh, where people are going, 9.30 to 11 p.m. All the bars are closed out here in L.A. and California. Um, Dennis says, when you wear a face mask, people trip out even more. That is true, Dennis. You know, so that actually may be, you know, to be fair, that may be one downside about wearing a face mask is that it kind of freaks people out. So uh, definitely uh, something to keep an eye on. Shannon says, has anyone gotten or will get the two week paid time off if ordered to self quarantine? So great question, Shannon. And we actually just published an article over on the Rideshare Guy uh, written by Sergio. He did some great research, found a driver who was actually got a self-quarantine notice from a doctor. So he wasn't diagnosed with coronavirus. I think he was tested, but the results haven't come in or something like that. And we're going to have a video out about that on Wednesday. But in the meantime, I'll share the link in uh, the chat right now. You can go read about what the, what happened to this driver. But long story short, 
this driver actually did get compensation from Uber. He was like a 60, 70 hour a week driver. So he's really full time. And he actually ended up getting $2,100 from Uber. And the process was, I wouldn't say smooth, but it worked, you know? So if you are quarantined by a doctor or if you are able to get a test and excuse me, show that you have coronavirus, you actually can get paid from Uber. Now with Lyft, I've heard of only two drivers so far that have submitted actual evidence of being quarantined. I don't think they had coronavirus and both of them actually got no response from Lyft. So we're sort of digging into that and hopefully they'll figure all that, uh, all that stuff out. Uh, triplet says I had the opposite of this. Someone freaked out cause I didn't have a mask, had to educate her with the type of mask she was using though. Yeah. So that's sort of, you know, I don't know. I, I think like, you know, you can sort of see from the mask, right? Some people say yes. Yeah, some people say no. Some people say it works. Some people say it doesn't. Some people get freaked out by it. Other people, you know, freak out if you don't have one. So I think that ultimately, right. Like, again, like if it comes down to stress, you know, maybe that's something that you just don't worry about. And if you can make, you know, uh, considerable, or you know similar amounts of money doing something else whether it's food delivery or package delivery go and go and try that um you know one thing i haven't talked to any uh, we did a big series on ease which is e-a-z-e which is marijuana delivery which is obviously very big in california because it's legal and i know other states it's legal but i imagine that you know people still gotta you know get their weed right now and maybe even more so because they're staying at home so i wouldn't be surprised if some of those services were doing uh, really well too um all right so let's see dennis says downtown long beach is a ghost town uh operation jackhammer says i have hello kitty face masks from japan they're cute i think i'll wear those for deliveries just because and yeah actually my uh you know we have a cleaning lady that comes once every month or two and she mentioned uh, she texted me and she said you know their cleaning business is way down no one wants their house cleaned right now and they're actually they were actually making uh you know cute little masks that you could wear um you know just kind of you know to stay safe and they're selling those on their instagram so i thought that was cool kind of i, I like seeing stuff like that you know like people it's again right like you know there, there's a lot of things going on out beyond our control of the virus you know what the government is or isn't going to do what uber and lyft are or aren't going to do but it's sort of like the reality is if you're an uber lyft driver right now your business is way down so what are your real options that you can do to either put food on your family or stay safe or whatever your number one priority is barry says uber is crashing and burning yeah i think that um you know uber i won't I don't know how interested you guys are, are in this, but you know, like their stock price, for example, was way down. And then now it actually kind of bounced back. It's still down, I think like 50 or 60% from their peak compared to the market, which I think is down 30%. So it's sort of doing worse than the market, which is a good uh, baseline kind of indicator or something to compare to. But I think that, you know, one of the nice things, if you know, your Uber or Lyft is that frankly, like they have a lot of variable expenses, right? Like drivers, you know, since drivers are not classified well, they're technically, you know, in California, they're supposed to be employees. But uh, since drivers are all independent contractors, right, during a slow time, they don't have any inventory, right? They don't have any cars to maintain, any service people to pay or anything like that. That's why these airlines, these hotels that have huge, you know, like planes or hundreds of millions of dollars, if they have all these planes sitting there unused, all that capital expenditures cost them a ton of money. So one of the nice things for Uber and Lyft is that I think they can weather a storm like this a lot better than other businesses. And I think that's, you know, Uber CEO did their, this call the other day and talked about that. And the stock price shot up. I saw someone else ask me about uh, Dara Khosrowshahi's letter that he sent to President Trump yesterday. And, uh, you know, without getting too political, basically what he said was he was asking for help, for support for drivers to be included in, you know, the next or the stimulus bill that the government is working on. And, you know, I think that's obviously a good thing. I think that drivers, you know, gig workers should definitely be included in any stimulus bill and kind of, you know, if a bunch, I, th I think it's a good idea, you know, if a bunch of people get money during this time, because, you know, anyone, you know, like we can all make do for a week or two, but like a month or two, like, I don't know, man, you know, I think everyone's going to have bills that are coming due, rent that's coming due, you know, just everything, food, right? You know, pre some people I heard actually for, for their preschools still have to pay their preschools for their kids, you know, so there's a lot of bills that are going to be coming up. And I think definitely, um, you know, I hope that Uber and Lyft drivers and gig workers are included in that. I will say it seems like they are going to be included in some type of stimulus bill or, you know, something. It seems like, you know, if everyone gets $1,000, for example, drivers will, will definitely be, I wouldn't say definitely, but it seems like they're going to be included in that. 
So we'll see uh, what happens in there. And then I think, let's see, what other questions? Uh, alcohol delivery city says, should we sue Uber and Lyft? I live in Virginia. Well, I'm, I mean, there are a lot of reasons you could sue Uber and Lyft. Let me know which reason why you want to sue them. Uh, Carlito says, if you file for unemployment, then I don't think we can drive because we are lying about not having a job. Yeah, you know, so I've heard from drivers in California um, because AB5 was passed that some drivers Drivers are trying to file for unemployment and to get sick pay um, and, you know, I guess unemployment pay. But I haven't actually heard of any drivers getting paid for that. We'll definitely keep an eye on that, though, because if that's something that's working for drivers, we'll keep you guys uh, um, a, a, a praised of that. The Traveling Breeze sort of asked a similar question. Can we claim unemployment even though we kind of just stop voluntarily? And so the answer is, I think you can try to claim unemployment, but I haven't heard of drivers actually successfully getting that. I know that Rideshare Drivers United, though, you know, an organizing group in Los Angeles that are their big proponents of AB5. I know I've seen a bunch of stuff on their website about how to do this. So if you guys are interested in, in California or in your own respective states, you could probably read that and try to do it. But definitely, if we hear about drivers, um, you know, sort of uh, getting that, then I think uh, we'll definitely cover that. I am curious if any of you um, have sort of changed your mind on, you know, because obviously one of the things that I think I've seen a lot of the AB5 supporters and all the drivers who want to be employees, one of the things they pointed out to me during this time is that, hey, if drivers were employees right now, they would actually be getting sick pay. They might get unemployment insurance. So I'm curious to know if any of you who are maybe against AB5 in the past have changed your mind because of this situation feel free to reply in the comments. Uh, Mike says, we're getting unemployment. Well, I'd love to know the details on how that uh, is working. Mike, the driver sensei says, nope, no change in mind. Um, so he hasn't changed his mind on AB5. Feel free to elaborate. And I'm going to take a quick pause while you guys type in your answers and take a sip of water. All right. Wow. We're actually up to 195 people watching live. That's great. So we only need five more to get to 200. Um, I only see 40 upvotes though. So if you guys haven't given this video a thumbs up, go ahead. And if you're enjoying the content, give it a thumbs up. If you're not enjoying it, then uh, you can just sit there and remain quiet. <laughs> um, but if you are enjoying this, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. And uh, I think that if you guys would like to see me go more uh, live, especially during this coronavirus issues and just kind of keep updating you guys on the latest and greatest and especially, you know, the work opportunities. I think that's one thing that we're getting a ton of questions from drivers on who can they work for, where can they work? Um, we're going to have a lot. We're really keeping a close eye on that. So I'm happy to help. And hey, look, we went over 200 and up to 64 likes. So it actually worked uh, when I asked you guys to smash the like button. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, let's see what other questions do we have? The entrepreneur is on. What's up, Kevin? Thank you for joining. And uh, oh, Dave, the Uber slave. So we've got a couple other YouTubers in here. You guys can definitely check out their channels too and see what uh, they have to say about Uber and Lyft and rideshare during this time. Dave says, Harry, Uber deactivated me and they won't say why. Interesting. I'm not sure. Feel free to share what the details are around that, Dave, but it seems like they should definitely at least tell you why I will say, you know, at least, you know, while you try to figure it out with them and work it out with them, you're not missing out on too much right now. Cause not a ton of, ton of demand, uh, for Uber right now, but we also work with a, uh, um, background check, uh, lawyer. And so if you're deactivated unfairly over like a background check issue or something like that, you can actually reach out to them and they can help you. They're called Francis and mailman. I can share that. I can send you an email later with that info. So let's see what other questions do we have coming? in traveling breeze says yeah we hit 220 so 220 people watching live um, uh, oh i see everyone giving a thumbs up uh into the live chat as says there's no thumbs up option on iphone oh interesting i mean thumbs up on the video you guys i, I appreciate all the thumbs up uh in the live chats but you got to upvote the video <laughs> But thumbs up in the live chat and a thumbs up on the video is great. I'll take it. And, uh, you know, I'm here to help you guys. So let's see what you guys have to say. Uh, Rick says you need to click the X on the upper right before you can give this video a like. Ah, interesting. So you have to close the video. It sounds like then give it a thumbs up. 
uh, Operation Jackhammer says, please help us keep us informed. It's a hard time for all Americans, especially us contract workers. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Driver Sensei says, Excuse me. I'm glad we are still independent, uh, independently dependent contractors. Having AB5 means I would have to deal with the headaches. Uh, Jonathan says Uber in New Jersey is not that bad. The only thing it's just taking a little longer to get rides. So it definitely I have noticed, you know, some cities and some areas are being hit harder than others. So one thing I would say is if you're still, you know, like San Francisco, I think has been like demolished, right? If you're an Uber or Lyft driver, um, it seems like drivers are going out there and making, you know, like honestly, like 80 to 90 percent less than they're used to. And so one thing I would just kind of keep an eye on is if you're in another area, right? The these trends that are happening in other places, like as they come to your area, sort of don't be surprised by them, kind of be ready for them to come to your area and see what drivers in other areas are doing to prepare so that if things do get worse in your area, you'll be ready and not kind of uh, so surprised. Oh, our smart says close the live chat to see the thumbs up. All right. So if you guys, oh yeah, now it's working. Now we got 220 people watching live and 105 um, thumbs up. So if you close the live chat on mobile, then you can give the video a thumbs up. And I really appreciate that. So, all right, enough begging and asking for likes. I appreciate you guys <clears throat> all doing that. Uh, the app entrepreneur says it shouldn't. One of the perks being independent is the ability to work when you want. David J with the first super chat, 199. You know, you just earned yourself a free question. So David, if you have a question, you let me know. That's pretty good value. I would say two bucks and you get access, uh, you know, you get straight to the front of the line and ask uh, whatever question you want. Uh, so the wolf says, I signed up for Instacart yesterday to not drive passengers, which aren't really around. If I'm working delivery, will that keep me from getting compensation from not being able to use Lyft? So I think if you're referring, you know, the Uber and Lyft and all these companies, they have their own sick pay program, right? If you do get diagnosed or if you do get quarantined. Um, so I guess you probably wouldn't want to work at the same time that you're supposed to be quarantined. But uh, I think you might be more talking about like if you're getting payments from the government. I don't think... Nothing that I've heard, I haven't seen of any, you know, like potential payments coming to drivers that you wouldn't get if you go and do other services. You know, like I know with Social Security, for example, right, I've heard that I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm a little younger, but I've heard that, you know, if you work too much, for example, then your payments get lowered. You know, I don't, I don't think they means test the payments in like a real time basis, but I think they do go back and look at how much you made last year. But I think drivers should be OK for the most part. Uh Pasnell says, I was working for five hours. I made $29. Dennis says, is Uber going to do something about the unfair low ratings? I'd be curious to know, Dennis, are you getting, you know, extra low ratings during this time? I will say, like, I feel like Uber and Lyft have been super slow during this whole coronavirus outbreak to kind of like get out ahead of everything, right? Like, it, you know, I feel like I'm getting emails from drivers about like, why isn't Uber doing this? And then two, three weeks later, Uber finally goes and does it. And that's like one good example. I saw that Instacart, for example, they actually are now not allowing or not counting ratings against the couriers, right? Because they realize, hey, you know, like all these items are out of stock. The couriers go to pick them up and then they drop them off at the customer's house and they didn't have half the items. It's not the courier fault, right? It's the, you know, it's no one's fault, but it's just, well, it's someone's fault, but <laughs> you know, it's not the courier's fault. And so they got rid of the ratings, right? So like, I feel like if ratings are an issue right now for Uber or Lyft drivers, then they should just say, Hey, you know, all these ratings during the coronavirus, it won't matter. Same thing happens in New York. You know, they typically use the scheduling system right now for Uber and Lyft drivers. And finally, like the other week, they just eventually said, okay, we'll get rid of the scheduling system and allow you to log on whenever and wherever. And it's like, why did it take them so long to do this? It took them forever to get rid of pooled and shared rides. That was kind of an obvious one. But I do hope that they, uh, you know, well, I don't know. I don't think they're going to, but I hope that they just start acting a lot quicker. Uh, that, that's sort of what I would like to see. David says, Uber's been behind. How about the federal government? Yeah, I guess the federal government has been a lot slower than Uber since drivers and, you know, everyone is still kind of waiting to see what's going to happen there. It seems like the latest, you know, I'll be honest, I haven't 
you know, I feel like there's so much happening in the federal government with like potential payouts and bailouts, but it seems like a lot of different policies have been discussed. And I think the best thing for drivers would be if, you know, kind of everyone across the board got this thousand dollars. And it sounds like it would be means tested based off your last year of earnings. So if you earn $75,000 or less, then you would get a thousand dollars and, you know, kind of like it gets knocked down by 5% uh, for every 5,000 over 75%. So I think a lot of drivers would uh, benefit from that. Uh, Randy says, New York Governor Cuomo has asked the feds to assist gig economy workers in New York State. Rideshare drivers are eligible for unemployment, but Uber and Lyft are not reporting income, which makes the application process hard. And that's sort of what I'm getting at, Randy. You know, I, I've heard that people are applying for unemployment, but it's just really difficult to actually get it, because, especially during this time. And so you could definitely try that. The other thing I just thought of right now that I think would make a lot of sense is just reach out to your local legislators, right? Like, the how you know, your representatives, so the the ones in the house and then also your sen- your state senators i think shoot them a tweet send them uh, an email you know through their contact form on the house of representatives right go if you don't even know who they are go look them up right because i think a lot of times like i said right there's a lot of things that are out of our control right now, but at the same time, it only takes a few minutes for you guys to go out. You know, if this is something that you really care about and you want to sh- sort of make sure your voice is heard, you can say something like, hey, you know, I'm an Uber driver. I'm used to making this amount. My demand is way down. I just want to make sure that we're covered, in, you know, by this bill. And will it have a huge impact? I don't know. Probably not. Will they even read it? I don't know. Maybe some, maybe someone from their staff will, but I know that it only takes two or three minutes. It really can't hurt. So I think that's another thing that I would definitely recommend. Um, Jay says unemployment is paid by the employer. Uber and Lyft are not our employers. Well, technically they kind of are in California. (laughs) It's just that Uber and Lyft say that they aren't. So, um, That might be a uh, different discussion. Timothy says, oh, I like this comment. Timothy says, I emailed both of my senators and my representative forward the Uber CEO's message with my own message explaining my situation. I said, I suggest everyone else on this channel do the, do the same. Timothy, I love that um, because Timothy is sort of putting his money where his mouth is. You know, I think that we tend to always, you know, we kind of like to complain about this or that, but, you know, like how long did that take Timothy? Five or 10 minutes. And I think that he actually, you know, kind of went out there and tried to do something about it. The other only other thing I would add is like go to social media too. Twitter and Facebook are great because, you know, like I even know that there's certain legislators that I follow, like they're replying to people all the time. So they're literally like reading a lot of this stuff. So, um, you know, nothing's guaranteed, but I definitely recommend uh, that you put your viewpoint out there, you know, kind of like you guys are doing right now. You're joining my live chat, spend, you know, some of you have already been here for 35 minutes. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Some of you be here for the whole hour and, uh, you know, take some of that time and go ahead and contact your uh, legislators and representatives. So, Uh, Let's see. We got another super chat. Charles came in with a $5 super chat. All right. So Charles, you are now in the lead. He says, I signed up for Uber Eats after three years of driving regular Uber, still not yet approved. Is this because of all of Uber services being sent home? So one thing I have heard is that, uh, you know, there's a flood of delivery drivers right now on some of these services. So in areas where let's say Uber has enough Uber Eats drivers already, they may not let you opt in, right? So again, if you're in one of those markets and that's sort of always why I tell you guys, right? Like, okay, if you're a rideshare driver, you always wanna have Uber, you always wanna have Lyft, right? Because even if you only drive Uber 100%, you never know what's gonna happen, right? You could one day, um, you know, Uber, I don't know, Uber could go bankrupt one day, they could go out of business and then you need Lyft, right? And if everyone from Uber switches over to Lyft, right, they may limit applications. And I think similarly with delivery, it's not a bad idea to at least diversify into Uber Eats or other these these other services before you need them. So Charlie, um, you know, you you may not have, there may not be much you can do to get to Uber Eats, but I think there are a number of other services, Instacart, Postmates, DoorDash, that might be a little more work now to sign up for than like that one one button opt-in on Uber Eats, uh, you know, from the Uber driver app. But I think it's a good lesson uh, for the future. So let's see. Um, oh, did we get Dustin is driving up in here? Wow, I haven't seen that guy in a while. Dustin, uh, good to hear you. I think you texted me the other day. I Sorry, I forgot to reply to you, but I just re- remember that. And uh, let's see what other questions we have going on. Um, do, 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 do. So, all right. So we've got Jay and Dustin in there moderating. Appreciate that. 
Uh, let's see, Jay, just because Uber has not paid in does not mean you cannot collect. Yep. Okay. Let's see. What other questions do we have coming in? Jonathan says, is Uber pool going to be completely gone from now on since we can't do Uber pool right now? So I think one of the interesting things that could come from all of this is like, what changes do they make temporarily? You know, like getting rid of Uber pool, might they keep you know, no Uber pool in the future. I don't know. I think that that actually, I I, I don't, I'll, I'll be honest. I think this is completely, you know, I, it's like, I have no idea. Um, but I would say that I could see that happening because Uber pool is actually a big money loser for Uber. If you guys notice, right? Like most of the rides, um, no, especially in some of the times, I think if you look at their numbers, they say that like over 50% of their rides don't match. And so a lot of times they actually lose money on Uber pool rides. So I don't know. I'd be curious to know. What do you guys think? If there was no more Uber pool after this coronavirus, uh, would that be a good or bad thing? I'm assuming uh, that most people <laughs> would probably be pretty happy with that. But let's put that question out there and see what you guys have to say. Uh, AS says, I hope no more pool ever. Dustin says, Uber pool will be back, sadly. And uh, I think I agree with you, Dustin. It will probably be back. But uh, hey, you know, there's always a chance that it could it could be gone. Uh, so Gail says lockdown will only last for two months like it did in China. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we will see. And uh, do, 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 do. Kevin says, I've never heard of Uber not onboarding drivers. Yeah. And I think actually in California, they are not onboarding drivers right now, as you might imagine, because there just isn't that much demand. So that's an issue. Robert says, get off the hourly concept by saying I work X amount of hours and make $25. You get paid per ride. So it's either you sit at home and complain or go out and sit in your car away from other people. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I think the best way to actually look at your uh, earnings is your cost per mile. And so that's sort of thinking about, you know, how much are you 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 know how much does your car cost to operate and subtracting that from how much you're making per mile and that's actually the number that i like best but uh it's the most confusing to calculate so if you're interested in how to calculate your earnings your cost per mile and figuring out what that number is i'll leave a link to an article that we've done in the past and you guys can check that out Robert says, I bought a select Lux car not to do pool. Yeah, I think you probably don't want to do pool with a with a nicer car. Uh, Excelsior says, no pool, no pool. A lot of people say no pool. <laughs> so I think uh, that's pretty... Uh, pretty consistent. John says, Grid Gridwise, the app will calculate your cost per mile for you. Oh, interesting. I don't know. That must be a new feature that they added, but Gridwise is definitely a good app. So you guys can go check that out. And uh, Nifty 50 says, does the stimulus package include us since we are considered self-employed? So I think that's kind of what I was talking about earlier is it's very up in the air right now. We don't know exactly what the stimulus package is going to look like, but all indications are sort of, you know, Dara, Kosher Shahi, the Uber CEO, wrote a letter to President Trump to make sure that gig workers are going to be included in this. I know Senator Mark Warner seems, I don't really know him or his deal or really much about him. I just always see his name kind of like, advocating on behalf of Uber and Lyft drivers. So, hey, sounds like a guy uh, <laughs> that I that we all probably should like. But it does seem like, like I think things are looking in a good direction or leaning towards a good direction that Uber and Lyft drivers will be included in this. So why is, Milad says, why is Instacart hiring 300,000, but other delivery companies haven't said they're doing anything like that? So I feels like to me, Instacart, you know, I kind of feel like with the whole coronavirus, we've seen a few different phases. And in the first phase, you know, people sort of stopped taking public transportation and moved over to Uber and Lyft. And then it was like, oh, wait, now Uber and Lyft aren't that safe. And I'm just going to, you know, now people are staying at home or staying in or in some states are sort of like in that in-between phase. And it seems like in that in-between phase, Instacart is like the most popular of all the gig services because people don't want either don't want to go outside or, you know, don't want to go the grocery store because there's long lines or whatever. And so they're ordering off Instacart or people want to hoard a lot of stuff. And so they're ordering off Instacart. I haven't heard, you know, we've talked to a lot of 
rideshare drivers who are switching over to food delivery, but it's not like, I'm not hearing that food delivery is like off the charts. You know, there's bonuses everywhere and it's like, everyone's making money hand over fist. I actually, you know, have not heard that at all. It's sort of like, Hey, this is the best option right now. So I think that, you know, there may just be a huge supply of drivers shifting from rideshare to delivery. So I don't know if those services will ever get super busy, but it seems to me like those are definitely some options that you can make some money with. I think one opportunity that you guys might want to look for is in your local area. You know, there's always the big companies that everyone knows about Postmates, DoorDash, Caviar, you know, Grubhub, all the big ones, but there's often like five to 10 smaller ones, even in the small cities. We have an article coming out where we highlight a bunch of kind of like random options like GoPuff and, you know, in LA, there's all these marijuana delivery services, you know, not even there's Ease, which is a big one, but there's all these other ones too. And I think right now, just a lot of people don't want to leave the house. So there's a lot of opportunity, you know, with Amazon hiring more people, but I would look for like the small to medium companies too. And you guys could, you guys could maybe find that by, um, you know, going onto Craigslist or looking at Facebook ads or whatever it might be. But I like those other smaller opportunities too. It doesn't have to be just the uh, big ones. So Dustin says, people want more groceries than actual pre-food made by others. And yes, hoarders. Yeah. So I think it does seem like Instacart is uh, pretty busy. Immortal Cerrito wants to know what you're drinking, Jay. I think he, uh, he must have seen your video where you drank a beer and read all your hate mail. Dave uh, wants some tequila. Wow, it sounds like maybe for our next uh, YouTube Live, I might have to switch from the water to a beer. It definitely would help my throat since I'm uh, talking a lot. Jonathan says, how are Uber drivers supposed to get cleaning supplies? So this is definitely an issue. And this is, again, you know, something I know Uber was trying to pass out some Purell bottles and some wipes at a certain, uh, you know, a while ago before they closed the hubs. But I feel like Uber and Lyft are not doing enough, you know, for the drivers that are driving. I think they need to do a lot more more and, you know, provide those drivers sanitizing wipes and or gloves or whatever, you know, face masks, whatever it is, uh, I think they need to go above and beyond a situation like this. And it may be even too late now since rides are way down. But I got an email the other day uh, from uh, from uh, Dash Bridges, our uh, DoorDash contributor and kind of delivery expert on the blog. And he actually got a little package from DoorDash that had five or six little mini bottles of Purell that had a DoorDash logo on it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So some companies are definitely doing more than uh, others, but uh, hopefully, you know, kind of it seems like, you know, when Uber launched their you know, sick pay, if drivers were quarantined or diagnosed, then all of the other companies copied them. So uh, it does seem like, you know, if one company does it, everyone else has to kind of go and uh, offer that stuff, too. So yeah, um, traveling guy says, how are you doing, Harry? Doing ride share of food delivery these coronavirus days? And I'll be honest, I think right now, um, I'm not, uh, I don't, I would not do Uber and Lyft right now personally. Uh, I think because of the much lower demand and just the fact that, you know, like if, I don't know, I feel like if the, the virus is going to be transmitted, like the back of an Uber Lyft car seems like the place it's going to happen, right? You're in a confined space for 10, 20 or 30 minutes at a time, sitting less than six feet together, a bunch of strangers getting in and out of the car um, and people are supposed to be at home right now. So it just seems like a bad idea to me. I think the, the opportunity, you know, what I like the best right now, if you're sort of want to balance the risk of, you know, coronavirus, but also having to make money, I think food delivery is where it's at because there's just so little human contact. You know, there's the restaurant pickup, but then you're back in your own car and there's the drop off. But, you know, it's not like people are opening the door and coughing on your face, right? It's literally like half, less than half a second. And even then you can now leave it on their doorstep in a lot of cases. So, uh, that's something you can do. Mr. 28, uh, I think keeps trying to spam uh, some message in here. I think we got it. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to put him in timeout for a second. And uh, Dustin says, now what's worse, grabbing riders and risking it or going shopping with tons of people? It's a dilemma. So that's sort of where, so guys, I went to the grocery store yesterday and there were like a lot of people in the grocery store and you know, you're walking down an aisle and someone walks right next to you. And so if you're really worried about this, like that's why I think that if you have to work, even though Instacart is really busy right now, I think if you're really worried about the safety issues and food delivery seems like your better bet uh, to me. 
Uh, that's sort of where I would go. And then, you know, I think the other thing that I know Jay is a huge fan of and a big proponent of is just working on your plan B, your plan B, your plan C. I see George. Uh, nice to see you, George. Haven't heard from you in a while. But he says, I'm working my plan B, C, and SS, <laughs> Social Security and Pension. Glad to share. So, the yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously there's certain requirements you might have financially. And once you meet them, maybe this is a good time to sort of catch up on on, you know, the education or the training or starting a blog or starting a YouTube channel or, you know, coaching or, you know, any of the million different things that we've kind of, you know, tried to highlight in the past or the other jobs or your career or whatever it is that's your kind of like ultimate goal in life, your plan B or your plan C um, or even just something if you want to keep driving for Uber and Lyft, something that can kind of diversify your income in a situation like this. So uh, I think that's great advice. And we'll have lots of articles and videos that are going to be helping with just that. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, Jay says, you're a great example of the need to drink water, especially during this pandemic. Yeah, I know I'm talking a lot. So <sighs> all right. Dustin says, Harry went out, he's infected. And, you know, so my wife is actually a OBGYN resident. And so she works at the hospital. And so she, she's actually off this week, but uh, she's been going into the hospital, you know, sort of every day. And so we've kind of been joking, like she's in the hospital, you know, and she's like on the front lines of it. And, you know, if anyone's going to get infected, it'll probably be her. And then she'll probably come home and spread it to all of us. So um, hopefully that doesn't happen. But, uh, you know, I think that as, as drivers, obviously, you know, sometimes there's always someone like in a worse situation than us, right? Like, I guess, you know, as far as like risk, for example, right? So the people working in the hospitals, obviously, are kind of maybe in the highest risk category. So kudos to them and all that they do there. M Mr. Freeney says, it's not worth exposing yourself to this on a daily basis. And Dennis says, that's why you need to save up your money. Week three, I'm still not driving. Yeah, I think that, you know, definitely, you know, I, I guess obviously you've probably noticed this channel in general, like we always try to look, I'm, I'm a bit of an optimist and half glass full. I'm always looking, you know, like kind of telling it like it is like, yeah, obviously this situation sucks, but what are the positive linings? What are the things that you can take advantage of in this situation? What are the businesses that are doing well in this situation, right? And how can you kind of hitch your wagon to those? So those are definitely things that I would look out for. Good. Go, go Donnie Calm with the 199 Super Chat. Appreciate that. He said, is it really money over lives on both sides? Uh, and then uh, Jay says, thank God for our healthcare workers. Yeah. Dustin says, I'm curious how many drivers are taking riders to hospitals. So yeah, I mean, you know, I think that that's the thing, right? You never really know. It could be you're taking people who might be sick to the hospital, but it could also be, you know, now that public transportation isn't working as well, right? You're taking nurses or even doctors to the hospital, right? So I think there's definitely some, there's still some good reasons for Uber and Lyft drivers to be out there because, you know, the thing right now, like in California, with this stay at home order, like the people that are out and about, like they should be out and about for probably very important reasons, right? Like maybe it's an elderly lady um, who has the Uber app, but doesn't have a car and has to go to the grocery store, right? So, you know, I think that uh, not driving at all um, may not be an option, but definitely there's some good reasons out there still. Operation Jackhammer. Oh, I like this one. Operation Jackhammer says, I'm studying to become a translator, but rent payments don't care about our hobbies. Sadly, we have to explore all options. So yeah, I think that that's a very valid point. And that's kind of why I say like, hey, do whatever is necessary to kind of meet your financial needs. But then after that, this is like pretty damn, you know, if you've sort of been like on the fence about starting that second career, or that plan B, or, you know, listening to those, uh, you know, Spanish tapes, or, you know, Chinese tapes, Tapes or Japanese tapes, whatever you're becoming a translator for, like this is pretty good, damn good motivation to do that. And, uh, you know, I think that that's like, again, like that's why I would take the silver lining and uh, try to uh, see the best of it. So uh, we're coming up on an hour. I really appreciate everyone who's joined. I'll answer a couple more questions and uh, where we've been over 200 people live for nearly this whole time. So really appreciate everyone joining. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up, you can do that below. And and that will help me in the YouTube algorithms. If you're seeing the live chat, I think you have to X out of the live chat. And then you can give this video a thumbs up and come right back to the live chat. You don't have to actually close out the video. 
So Excelsior says Metro lines are still operating. They don't have six foot distance. I'm surprised they're still operating as normal. I think the challenge with public transit and, you know, Uber and Lyft is that when you start to close down these transportation options, then, you know, maybe the nurses that, you know, are going to the hospitals or the grocery workers that are going, you know, to the grocery stores or like the essential businesses that are open, right? If you kind of limit their transportation options and they can't get there. So that's why they can't close some of those things. Operation Jackhammer says, as soon we're all getting twelve hundred dollars, guys. Remember that? Yeah, I hope so. I hope everyone is going to get a thousand uh, bucks or maybe a couple thousand bucks over the next month or two, and um, you know, kind of obviously not uh, you know better than nothing, right? Jay says the J Dub says the majority of my rides these days are folks in healthcare, transportation, and food. Public transportation is down, and they are relying on us. I think that's a great way to put it, J Dub. You know, the rides that are happening right now on Uber and Lyft are are the essential ones. They're very important. So if you guys are out there still driving for Uber and Lyft, my hat is off to you because uh, I think indirectly we're all benefiting from the rides that you are giving. You know, if you're giving rides from for nurses to go to the hospital or whatever, you know, even to the grocery store. Like I said, I went to the grocery store yesterday and who knows, maybe some of the employees took an Uber or Lyft to get there. So definitely appreciate that. Um, all right. And I think, um, okay, let's see if there are any other questions coming in before I sign off. I'm going to do a little giveaway today. We're going to do something a little different that I think you guys will enjoy. And, um, I think that's about all the questions we went for nearly an hour today. So, um, if you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to give away. So today, you know, normally I give away like swag or gifts, but I think today I want to make more of a financial contribution contribution. You know, it's not gonna be a ton, but I think we're going to give away um, four. So you can win one of four $25 Amazon e gift cards, right? Obviously, every Amazon's still working great. And you can order stuff on Amazon, just as good as cash. And so in order to enter the contest, all you need to do is email me harry at the rideshare guy.com. Um, and I like, and the subject line would just be YouTube live giveaway. And just tell me one thing, um, that you're sort of working on right during the coronavirus, right? Maybe it's, you know, you're focusing on Uber and Lyft driving. Maybe you're focusing on food delivery. Maybe it's a side hustle. Maybe it's a plan B, maybe it's a plan C. I just want to sort of know one kind of unique thing that you're working on during this time of coronavirus, right? Like there's all this stuff going on, but what's something you're doing, you know, to better yourself personally or better your financial life or better your business or whatever it might be, email me harry at the rideshareguy.com subject line YouTube live giveaway. And we'll pick uh, my favorite four answers. And you guys will each win a $25 Amazon gift card. So we've got 200 people watching. I bet like 25, maybe since we're doing cash today, I bet maybe like 40 people will email me. So I'm guessing you have a one in 10 chance of winning $25 Amazon gift card because most people watching this I know are uh, too lazy to email me. So that'll be a challenge to you guys. And if you want to enter to win the contest, go ahead and uh, email me harry at the rideshareguy.com subject line YouTube live and just let me know one thing that you're working on right now to better yourself personally, professionally, business or just in general. General, maybe it's in your community, whatever it might be. And um, I think uh, this is a good time to sign off since you guys are all now arguing in the comments. So <laughs> appreciate uh, Jay, Jay Crater, uh, senior contributor at the Rideshare Guy for moderating. Dustin is driving for joining. And I know we also saw Dave, the Uber slave, another YouTuber, um, the entrepreneur Kevin for joining and uh, chatting it up a little. I think um, if you guys haven't given this video a thumbs up, go ahead and do so now. Really appreciate this. I'll definitely be back um, you know, next month, but maybe even sooner. It seems like it might be a good time to sort of do weekly YouTube lives and keep you guys updated on everything that's going on. So uh, if all goes well, you may see me again in the next week or two. If you're watching this video after the fact, you can also leave a comment down below and uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do so now and turn notifications on. That way you will actually get an email 
notification when we go live and you can know. And uh, without further ado, my voice is about done. So I think this is a good time to end. All right. Take care, everyone. Stay safe out there. Keep driving, um, you know, whether it's ride share, food delivery or, you know, staying at home and staying safe. But do what you got to do to stay financially ahead of the game and, you know, work on that plan B, plan C. This is good motivation for everyone right now. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. And uh, until next time. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.